Hello and welcome back. Today is our fourth video on basic statistics in Excel. Today we're going to be learning how to do a linear regression given a, a set of data. So today our data sets are two different salt solutions and we're looking at how the conductivity varies with concentration. So what we're hoping to do with this is to develop a correlation curve where we can predict the concentration of a salt solution given a measured conductivity. But the first thing that we'd have to do is actually measure conductivities for known concentrations of solutions. And so that's what we have to do to set up a calibration curve. So this is that data. So what we're gonna do is try to make our calibration curve. So we're gonna start with ammonium chloride. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna plot, our, uh, plot this data on a scatter plot. So we're gonna highlight the whole data set we're going to click insert. We're going to click the scatter plot button and we're going to pick the one that doesn't have any connections, no lines between the data points. All right, let's add in our chart title so that we can differentiate between the ammonium chloride and the potassium iodide. And we can also add in axis titles. Now the question is what's actually plotted on each axis. So if we go in and we click on that data point, you can see that we start off with our concentration. And the second thing in that bar is our conductivity. Well, what's happening is our the second one is actually our x-axis and the first one is our y-axis. So that's our dependent variable is showing up first and their independent variable is showing up second. What we actually want is the concentration in the y-axis and the conductivity in our x-axis. So we need to flip these. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just click on that purple box, drag it off for a second. Our data disappears, but we're gonna, it's gonna show back up in a second. And we're just gonna switch the spots of those. You can also go in and you can actually change it up here in the formula bar, or you can right click on the data set and click select data. And you could also change it here by switching your X values and your Y values. All right, so now we have our data set. So we can add in our axis titles on the side. So this is our concentration in weight percent. And on our X axis is our conductivity in millisiemens per centimeter. Okay. and I. Just need to be clear that I did get this data from um, a website that's listed down below at the bottom of the Excel spreadsheet. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna plot a regression. So this is really great. We can see that we have a fairly linear relationship between our data points, and this is real data. And what we're gonna do is we're going to click on that data set. We're gonna right click, and we're gonna add a trend line. And so what'll happen is it'll pop up this toolbar on the right hand side and the default is linear regression. And so that's what we want. So we're going to leave it there. We're going to have the next video looking at exponential logarithmic and power law functions. But for now, we're going to stick with the linear. And what we need, want to do is we want to actually see our equation. So we're going to display that equation on the chart by clicking that box. And we're going to display the R squared value. So the R squared value just gives a measure of how well your regression fits your data set. We're not going to go into a lot of detail on, on what the R squared means. There are other places you can look for that information. So 0.992. So if you have an R squared value of one, that means your regression perfectly fits your data set. So really close to one means you have a really great regression line. So this is great. We expect that we should be able to use this to predict our concentration of ammonium chloride based on the conductivity. But let's say we actually want to use that slope and intercept. Um, you could write it down based off of this, the equation that you have on the chart, or we can use Excel's functions to pull that information from Excel itself. So slope is just slope function. And we plot the known y's, which in this case are our concentration versus the known x's, which is our conductivity. And what we get, let's shrink down the number of uh, sig figs that we have. And you can see that it matches the slope that we have on the figure. So we can do the same thing for the intercept, and unsurprisingly, the function for the intercept is intercept. So you'll again choose the y's first, followed by the x's, 
bracket the whole thing in parentheses, click enter, and look, voila, it matches. Um, let's say, for example, you have a situation where you want to fix the intercept at zero. The slope function in this case will not do that. You need to use something called uh, the line est function, which is a way to estimate the uh, slope of a line. And we can do that the same way where we plot our y's, comma, x's. And then the constant is where you define the intercept. So if we leave it blank, what we get is the slope that we had before. But if we bake it a zero, now it's going to hold this intercept at y equals zero. And so um, if we go in and we actually look at that regression line, and there's a way to set the intercept at zero, generally you wouldn't want to do this, but there might be occasions where it makes sense to do it based on your data set. You can see that the slope now matches this line est value. So why would you want to pull the slope and the intercept out? Well, if you're dealing with situations where you have really, really small numbers or really, really large numbers, Excel truncates those numbers and it doesn't plot all of them. And so it's sometimes you can lose a lot of precision when you're dealing with things where Excel is plotting maybe 0.001 and you need more accuracy than that, right? So the slope and the intercept allows you to pull those values without with an adequate amount of precision that you can't get just from reading it off the chart. So I highly recommend those functions. So let's repeat this for our potassium iodide and take a look at something else we can do with our data sets. So we're gonna just change the title in anticipation of switching the data. And we're gonna try really hard to click on our data set. There we go. So what we're gonna do is just pull these um, our x and y values over and then we're going to drag down to encompass the whole data set and so what we see is this is not quite as nice of a regression as we had for the ammonium chloride um, what we have here is it looks like we've got maybe a linear region up to about 15 weight percent and then the slope of the line may change up here but it's kind of hard to say so if you want to if you need the information above the 15 percent read um in this middle region, this may not be the best uh, regression line. You're going to be underestimating the concentration for a given conductivity in the middle of the region. So one thing that we can do is we can truncate this data. Maybe that, that lower region is as linear as it looks to us. So we can reduce, cut out those top two data points. And there we have a much better curve going up to 15 weight percent. So one thing to keep in mind if you do this is this is no longer valid at those higher weight percents. So if you were to use this to estimate anything above 15%, that would be extrapolation and that's a big no-no. So don't do that. But we can do the same thing here where we can take the slope and the intercept. Um, we can truncate the data if we wish to, to only look at a certain region and that works um, as well. So that's it for linear regressions. Next video is going to be looking at uh, logarithmic, exponential, and power law functions. So stay tuned.